Yo, what up, though? What up, though? What up, though? I've been trying to record, bro. I've been slick sick in it, but I came out the, uh, hold on, I'm doing something real quick on my other phone. I came out the, uh, I was at a friend of mine's spot. I come out the house last night, but my tires, two on, all the way down on the ground, bro. It was raining so hard out here last night. I done got the car to the stove trying to put air in it. None of that worked. Um, so I had to leave the car right there, bro. And uh, I left the car right there. And um, I, I came back this morning. Had to take the car to, uh, I mean, not the car. I had to jack the car up, take the tire off, took it to the tire, the tire shop. They... I had to pay for a new tire. They used my rim, get me right. Then I had to get back to my car, put the tire back on there, and now I'm good. So between last night and today, I was in the rain a lot. You know what I'm saying? I think it gave me a little cold, but big, big, big shout out to Lante Black. Lante Black, yeah. Shalom. So I was just laying here thinking I got me a a lot of sleep today, and uh, you know how you feel when you got a cold. You be slick, feeling a little sore, and you be feeling cold, so you lay around under the cover. So I'm definitely probably finna go back to sleep. I just was thinking about it, <laughs> and I wanted to tell y'all this. So Donnie is an individual, right? Donnie used to get bullied, right, by gang members. You know what I'm saying? He used to get bullied. He used to get robbed, beat up, all kind of things. He used to get bullied all the time. So he, you know, I don't know if it was finesse, if it was purposely done like that or whatever, but he just so happened to get cool with one of the guys, right? They got real cool, and it got to the point, bro was damn near like willing to stand up for Donnie. And then the bullying kind of slowed down a little bit. Next thing you know, they brought Donnie in. They brought him in. Um, Donnie, light skin, short dude, skinny dude. He probably was around my age at the time, probably 26, not about 25, 26, something like that. Um, Donnie be having motion sometimes, you feel me? Uh, definitely after the guys accepted him, he, you know, was having more emotion than he did before because now he ain't got to worry about nobody trying to take nothing from him or do nothing crazy to him. Um, one day, Donnie come to my room. He said, hey, CBL. I'm like, what's up? He said, shit, look, man, invest with me on this piece and we can go crazy. I say, what piece? What you talking about? He say, for the window. Now, here's the play. And before I even tell y'all this play, I got to say this just so don't nobody try to say, oh, he exposed or something or anything like that. Before I proceed, please hit that like button if you ain't hit it. So a play people bust sometimes is they get a certain type of tool. I know it's a certain saw. It's a certain type of saw you need. It's a certain type of saw you need. And there's other tools. And over there by the window, you got people that put a lot of effort, a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of energy into cutting the window. I'm talking about literally cutting through the bars on the window, cutting the window. Um, And then they'll jump out of the window and go run and meet they folks and grab the pack or they throw the pack over the fence, whatever the case. And like I say, that spot has been popped a million times. So the, they know people do it. They done caught people doing it plenty of times. So that's why I said it ain't no secret or nothing like that. I just had to let that be known. So he say, shit, bro, the, uh, the, the dude who work in maintenance, he talking about he wants $600 for that little piece, bro. He like, bro, we get it. Man, uh, what bro name was? Um, damn, we just gonna call him Wyatt. 
He said, if we get it, bro, I'll put Wyatt to work. You know, I got him on my payroll. And we could go half on whatever, like, whatever it is we do, you could get in whatever you want. I can get in whatever I want. So, basically, he's telling me that for about $600, he can get the piece that we would need to cut the windows off. And then somebody would jump outside the window, run to the gate, grab some contraband, and run back over here to the window. So I'm like, shit. I thought about it for a while. I'm like, shit, but that make plenty of sense. Now, like I say, people be busting these moves sometimes, but it takes so much effort. And you got to have several people like willing to help you and be down with this and be down with that to the point it's, it's not as easy as say it sometimes. It's not that easy. You know what I'm saying? We end up buying the piece. It's this guy in the door named Wyatt. Wyatt is like a handyman. Everybody cool with Wyatt. Um, he ain't got nothing going on. He just know how to do everything. He could tattoo. He could fix anything if it breaks. He could fix your headphones, your radio, your uh, your tablet. He'll wash your clothes. He'll clean your room before inspection. He's just an overall type of guy to do all that. We get the piece. And Wyatt go to work. You got Wyatt and like two of his homeboys down there. And this like went on for three days, bro. Every day. Like it was serious. It was to the point where, it was to the point where, you know, we would let people know like, hey, when we need people to post up right here and block off the police view, we're going to make sure we, we give a darn phone. And that basically just means it's a phone that don't belong to nobody specifically and we just let it float around so everybody can use the phone for free. Don't nobody got to pay to use the phone. So that was our promise to the dorm. Y'all help us out. We're going to get a dorm phone in here. And y'all can go down. Shit, everybody have a scheduled time that they can use the phone. So we're getting plenty of help, bro. It was a lot of work. I'm talking about Wyatt and them down there sweating like a slave. They getting black dirt stuff all over them. I don't know what they had going on, but... They had a whole lot going on. It was a lot of effort into that. Um, um, Donnie called me down there. This on the third day. And we got to collect some sheets. And I got to help him tie it. So, man, we taking damn near whole sheets. We taking a sheet and cutting it down the middle. Rolling it up. And we need three of them pieces. And that's we going to make one big ass, thick ass braid. Man, we had to go get. Bro, probably 12, 13 sheets from different people. We need to make a real, real, real long ass braid. So uh <clears throat> after Wyatt and them get through cutting the window up, Wyatt is actually the one who's gonna go out there. Now rewind a little bit in the process, you know, of these three days going on, Donnie said he's getting two bags of gas. Two bags of gas. I wasn't worried about the gas, which is the Al Green, because I felt like if I get the phones, that's a great value in that. I'll just get the phones, and then, you know, I'll probably get a bag of the gas, and I can get him a couple of these phones, and that's the way we'll do the deal. So the girl I was dealing with at the moment, man, I, I sent this girl out there to buy. That girl probably bought 40 phones, bro. 40 phones. You can only get two or three phones per store. That's how you know how many times in different stores she had to go to. So, uh, that was the agreement. He get two bags of Al Green. He gonna give me half. I'm gonna give him half for the phones. Even though I would have been losing anyway because that value still ain't the same. That's just what we agreed to do. Now, I don't know if y'all know or not, right? When somebody say, I got two bags of the gas, bro, you're talking about two pounds. That is slang for a bag on the streets is a pound. That ain't no literally two bags. It's two pounds. 
So I done had my folks on the street. Oh, girl, because it was his folks that was doing the throwing. I done had my folks on the streets meet up with his folks. So they met up with his folks. Oh, girl gave his family the phones and stuff. So we had people in the back windows, bro, watching the peacock. They watching the peacock, which is the car that just drives around nonstop. And we got about, I think every time they drive past us, I think it'd be about a minute, if not a full minute, close to a minute. But I believe it was a good minute before they coming back in front of you again. Um. So we had time it from the second they drive off. Uh, Donnie's folks was in the woods, ducked off hiding. As soon as the Peacock drive off, they took off running up to the building. Throwing everything over the fence. OG, OG, Ron, what up, though? Throwing everything over the fence. When they threw everything over the fence, we waited to the Peacock drive around. He did that about two, three times until everything was over there. He went on about his business. We waited until the Peacock went back around. Once they ran around, we threw wide out the window. We didn't throw them out there. But we helped them get out the window. And the braided sheet that we was using, we threw that out there. That's what he's crawling down on. Man, it probably took, man, probably damn near 10 trips, bro. Kawhi was just grabbing like a little bit at a time. We wanted to pressure him. Like, bro, bring more of that up here, bro. So we ain't got to keep doing just a little bit. But we can't because at the end of the day, he's the one got to do it. And he damn near holding on with one hand damn near. Like coming back up. You know what I'm saying? So we got to let him do it however however he's comfortable doing it. Um, So it gets in there, bro. All right? I shoot in the room with bro. Once we got everything in here, uh, Wyatt and them go back just to fixing that window up. Just to make it look like. It's perfect. It ain't, uh, you know, it ain't been tampered with. Because the police check that. When they come in the dorm, that's a part of their checks. They be checking the windows, like I say, because they know people be busting these moves. So we get in the room, bro. And, you know, we opening everything up. And the very first thing I noticed, now, I have seen plenty of stuff vacuum sealed. Beacon turned in my mind. You sound better under the weather. You sound under the weather. Feel better, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's just a little cold, bro. It ain't nothing. I was out there in the rain, man, trying to change this damn tire. But um, um, what I noticed wasn't right off the dribble is the size bags. Like, now, nah, I know stuff be vacuum sealed sometimes. But, bro, even a vacuum sealed pound of some gas is not finna be super tiny like that, bro. It's still gonna have a, and I know your folks ain't got no goddamn hydraulics compressor where you done made it tiny. It's, it's just not adding up. I, I count the phones out ASAP. Everything is accounted for. So he get to open and everything. So he like, shit, how many of them you finna give me, bit, bro? I say, shit, bro, hell no. Nah. He like, what you mean? I'm like, bro, that's not, you You not keeping your word. He like, how I'm not keeping my word? I'm like, Donnie, this is not no two pounds of gas, bro. What the fuck is this? It really looked like a, a half a pound separated into two separate bags. So he like, no, bro, I said two bags. I wasn't saying a pound. At that moment, he was running game. Because he know just like I know, bro, that's not how that go. If you say a bag, I really feel like I got to sneeze. If you say a bag, you know damn well what we're talking about, bro. Your ass is flexing. You know what's going. Me and him get to argue. Feel me? So he like, all right, say less, bro. Don't even worry about it. Well, well shit, how much it is? I got to give you for about a couple of them. I'm like, bro, I'm straight. I just felt like you were playing. At this point, you was playing, bro. You know what you was doing. Um... It is not a situation. Big shout out to Gary Bragg. It's not a situation where you got down, didn't know, or you bought this. I really believe he been had that at the crib. And he just, he knew what he was doing, bro. So I dipped. I had some of my guys a phone. Uh, Wyatt, I called him up there, gave him two phones. 
And then I pay, you know, some people to move them around, spread them out, put them up for me, but put them in all kind of different places. So I guess um, Donnie don't want to make it seem as if it's some type of smoke or whatever. He ain't want to be face to face for whatever reason because he called me while I'm in my room. Me and him going back and forth, talking for a while. He's in his room. He could walk straight over here. He didn't. We just seen her chopping up. We talking for a long time, trying to come up to an agreement. I'm just telling him, like, bro, you didn't keep your word, bro. I'm not, hey, bro, I don't negotiate with terrorists. You not keeping your end of the deal, that means my end of the deal is instantly void. So, um, he like, all right, bro, how about this? We just going to run it back. We're going to run it back next time. I'm going to make sure my end's straight. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. We got. I got to get off some of this first, though, before we... Before we run it back, I got to get off this first. So he like, all right, that's a bet. Um, I noticed I didn't see Wyatt walking around in the dorm no more like he usually be, but he did just get two phones, and Donnie probably gave him some Al Green, so he probably nice and ducked off. But you know, I ain't too tough studying him. I ain't too 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 tough studying him. I ain't just paying attention for real, but. When I did step out the room every here and there, I noticed I didn't see him. You usually see his ass everywhere, trying to get a, uh, trying to get something. You know what I'm saying? Just doing something, moving around. So I'm trying to think. The very next, no, later that night. It was later that night. I remember it now. My popper broke. The popper is what you use to get a light. My popper broke. So I go to the door. I'm trying to smoke me one. I go to the stuff to the door. I call the orderly name. The orderly come over there to the door. I'm like, hey, bro, do me a favor. He like, what's up? I'm like, man, tell Wyatt to make me a popper real quick, and I'ma pay him soon. The doors pop in the morning. He walk off. He like back. He come back. He say, she Wyatt ain't in there. I say, what you mean? He said, he ain't in there. He said his roommate. His roommate said, got down. Somebody put him on a dough. I say, huh? Put him on a dough? Somebody put him on a dough. I said, bro, go ask him who, bro. He came back. He was like, bro, he said he ain't getting into that. He don't know nothing about nothing. I said, all right, bet. Very next morning when the dough popped, that's the first place I go. I shoot straight down to the Wyatt room, knock on the dough. His roommate was in there woke, looking crazy. I'm like, hey, bro, where the, where the hell uh, bro go? He like, shit, he went to the hole. I'm like, what happened? He like, hey, CBL, bro, whatever y'all got going on. This a white guy. He like, whatever y'all got going on, bro, please keep me out of it, bro. Um, I ain't snitching, bro. I don't run my mouth. I, I really don't even want to be talking about it. I don't want to be caught up in this. I don't want to get caught up in the crossfires. I'm like, huh? What is you talking about, bro? He like, man, you know the GDs came in here and robbed uh, Wyatt and put him on the door. Huh? G now, listen, here's the thing. Here's the kicker now. At this point, when this happened, I had to say so. Ain't nothing like that happened in this dorm without me knowing about it. There is no way this happened in this dorm and I didn't know nothing about it. So I'm like, okay, bet. I shoot up. Well, I tried to finesse him out of a name, like who who was in here, but he wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? He wouldn't say nothing. He he just played crazy. I'm like, all right, bet. So I get ready to leave out when they call a child. Now I could have just went and asked the guys, like, what the hell y'all did to him? What y'all did to him? But I know they ain't gonna lie. I, I just know that group of guys I was around, they was not gonna keep it real, bro. And then I kind of wanted to have both sides before I even I wanted to have his side too, you know what I'm saying? Man, I shoot out there when they call a child. I shoot down there to the hole. I walk in the door. Say hey, what? Say hey, what? Say hey, what? Say hey, what? He like, yo, bro. I'm like, what room you in? He tell me the room he in. I shoot up there to his room. I'm like, bro, what the f happened to you, bro? He was like, bro, I'm good. I don't even want to. I'm like, nah, ain't no nothing. What happened to you, bro? He got quiet for a while. Then he said it again. Like, bro, I just don't want to get caught up in nothing. And I was just like, bro, you not. I'm just trying to see what the hell happened, man. I needed a popper made, whatever the case. And, bro, that dude told me that Donnie ran in the room on him, pulled out a candy bar, kept saying, nigga, GD, 
Oh, GD, I kill you on GD. Come on with that. G give me them phones on GD. Man, open up the spot right now on GD for you die. After Wyatt gave Donnie the phones, Donnie made him leave out the door, kicked him out the door right before lockdown. It pissed me off so bad, bro. I think the reason it pissed me off, honestly, multiple reasons. Number one, I already kind of had a bad taste for Donnie in my mouth. Just, just simply because I know, you know, I know you ain't really stand up for real. Like, the way you even became this was because of something crazy you had going on with somebody else. So I really feel like you damn near finessing us to be your protectors, knowing you ain't going to squash a grape. That was number one. Number two, after we bust that move and he sat there and played them games about the bags, it just made me mad, bro. And I did, so I probably shouldn't have did, but it pissed me off so bad. And I said, I want him to get a taste of his own medicine. His own medicine, because you can't just be doing, bro, this man just sat here for days cutting his window for us. Hopping out, taking a risk of getting caught and being charged with escaping, getting an extra five years added to his sentence. He just did this for us. And you that petty. You going to go rob the man, take the phones I gave him, then put him on the door. I went back in the door and I played it cool. I sent him two more phones. I needed to clear up a little space anyway. I sent him two more phones from uh, through the orderly. And I played it smooth, bro. But I had it in the back of my mind. I'm going to rob Donnie. And I'm not sending the blitz. I'm not running in there 10 deep. I'm going in there by myself. Because I'm about to prove something to you. You know what I'm saying? I Man, I played it cool for about a month. It was I don't know, bro. Like I said, I done did a lot of wrong in my life. You feel me? So I don't really be understanding why. You know, sometimes I see somebody doing somebody wrong or whatever the case, and I be just so offended. You feel me? When I done did some of the same stuff to people. Man, I say about a good month went by, bro. We bust the move again. Donnie got like 10 phones, a real bag of some Al Green at this time. He got some tobacco. They got some shoes, like just stupid stuff. Stuff that's hot that's going to bring attention. This nigga got some shoes, an Apple Watch. Just doing all kind of stuff like that. Nah, we got in the room. I grabbed my net bag, you know, getting ready to separate my stuff. I handed Donnie the net bag. I said, folk, put everything in that bag. He said, what you mean? Nah, I pulled the candy bar out. I said, bro, put everything in the bag. It's over with. He said, hold on, G, what you got going on? I said, bro, I don't care about none of that, bro. You're not finna be running around here oppressing people, bro. Just just doing people any kind of way. And I know the only reason you doing that because you done joint this, bro. You was never, it was never heard of for you to be doing nothing to nobody before you ever joined this. So now I'm offended because I feel like you manipulating us. I feel like you macking us. You feel me? How the hell you gonna mack the mob? So he like, man, folk, you tripping, folk. G, you tripping. I'm like, bro, put everything in that net bag. I ain't doing no more talking, folks. That man put everything inside that net bag. I told him, get on the door. I walked out with it, put the candy bar back in my pants. A few of the guys came, pushed up on me. They're like, what's up? You good? You need some security or something? You know, whenever somebody get a pack in, they need security or whatever. I told, I think it was three of them. I told them, go down there and make sure Donnie go and get up out the door. They're like, what the hell happened? I'm like, he was stealing, bro. He got caught stealing. And uh, I'm finna put the paperwork on him now, but go on, get him up out of here. Make sure he get out the door. So they're like, all right, bet. They shoot out. They they ready to do whatever told because, shit, they know we just got this pack. They trying to eat. And I'm gonna feed them. I say about a week later went by. The violator pulled up on me. And the other dude that was directly over me, they pulled up from another door and they was like, hey, bro, you know, you already know, but you in a lot of trouble. I'm like, how? They're like, nigga, you pulled a candy bar out on a brother. I'm like, I ain't gonna lie to you, folks. I don't even acknowledge him as a brother. I don't see him as a brother of mine um, for multiple reasons. I told them all the reasons. I'm like, and then, bro, this man 
is using around. This man is using some shit that we've been standing on for years, and he's playing with it, bro. This man using this tactic to 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 rob people and run down on people. Come on, bro. Like you ain't never did that before. Why do you join GD and then start just acting like you 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 Batman or something? Like hell no, I can't respect that. So, shit. They was like, uh, well, I am getting violated, but I just gotta pay a fine. I'm like, what's the fine? They said a thousand dollars. I said, you would take a phone. The violent, he really some BS, cause we really cool. He'll scratch my back, I scratch your back type of dude. He like, shit, make it two on. Make it two, but I know you got a bunch on. You don't make it two, it's over with. I gave the nigga two phones. They wrote me up and say that I was extorting, that I bared arms, this, this, and that. But I ain't gonna lie. When I think on it years later, I don't think they really uh, submitted it for real. I think they just finessed it just to get something out the deal because... Like, if they'd have submitted it for real, I probably would have been in way, 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 way more trouble than paying a fine simply because I did pull a candy bar on the brother. But I just was sitting back thinking about that situation, and I wanted to come in here and tell y'all that. What y'all got going on, though? I ain't been reading the comments. Matter of fact, I'm about to take my ass back to sleep. I love y'all. Good night, bro. <laughs> I ain't been MIA. I was just on here the other day. <laughs>